We hope you enjoy listening to this weekly podcast from Lifeline Church. Find out more by visiting lifelinechurch.co.uk. So I spoke last week a little bit about something God has said to me. And today I want to share with you some of the context and some of the other points that I think came out of that. I don't have a PowerPoint, which is unusual for me, but I do have a structure, which is traditional to me. Um, So the things that that if you're making notes, the headings that we're going to go through, there are three main points, which is super. I didn't actually manage to make them all start with the same letter. I didn't realize there were three points until I looked at it this morning. So I'm going to give you a bit of a context and introduction. Um, Then we're going to look at the gentle breeze, the next leaf from routines, going to look at release from ruts. And then hopefully I'll wrap it all up in a nice, tidy little package. So in terms of the context, um, a friend of mine who will remain nameless made me go running about kind of 12 years ago or so. And uh, I, I was never into running. I'm not really a runner, but I've now been running for about 10 or 12 years. And so I suppose it's become something new. It's become part of my my routine. And just like my surfing, I might have been doing it for very many years, but I'm still not very good at it. So I'm not highly skilled, but I am rather persistent. Um, And there's certain things that I do that probably reflect my personality. Like when I run, I run in the same direction. Um, If I run with someone else and they think we're going to run a certain way around the park and they've got the wrong way around, I can't run that way because this is the way that I run. My running has become quite key, particularly during lockdown. It was a good release. But I noticed that my run was actually a really good time to meet with God. And so I started to develop a very healthy routine that didn't use the run as exercise, but actually used the run in terms of, I suppose, spiritual exercise in in meeting with God a time, perhaps away from the distractions and chaos of the home, um, a time where I could zero in on God. Developed a, a routine and And when I used to do my long run with a friend, we used to spend some time praying and encouraging each other. And uh, I didn't think that I'd be able to do my long run without having someone with me. But as I developed this routine, I found that that I could I could run. And so my routine is something like this. And I do have routines for lots of things. I think uh, I think it's a very good way to be. And some people like that structure and some people don't. So I listen to a podcast, um, try and hear something that God might be saying. I spent some time speaking in tongues. I'm not sure if you remember um, a few years ago, dad did a talk and encouraged us to spend time each day speaking in tongues. And I find that to be quite useful to do when I'm exercising as well. Um, And and he said about 15 minutes. Well, I find three kilometers um, is is a similar similar amount. Um, Then I spend some time praying. And then I'll spend some time worshipping. I try and I try and time my worship so I can be running through Hainault Forest with my arms raised, singing at the top of my voice. And I try to do it so that it's early in the morning so no one else is in Hainault Forest because I wouldn't want to scare them. And I find that God often speaks to me as I run, which is why I do it um, really now, particularly the, the long runs. And I remember Mark McGrath talking to us many years ago about spending time hearing from God. And he said, when you sit and wait on God is if I write it down, then that gives freedom in my brain to be able to hear the next thing that God wants to say to me. The problem is writing down when you're running is a bit tricky. And so if I don't write down when I'm running, I I get backlogged. And it's like the, the word that God gives me forms a dam. So what I've learned in these long runs with the benefits of technology is to use advice here. If I stop running, I pause my my run keeper, my Garmin. Um, I get to my notes page of my phone and I write down what I feel God's saying. I find that can be a really good way to to keep my mind free to be able to hear God and see all the things that he wants to say to me. But that has a really negative impact on my run speed, distance and time. And so there's a real sacrifice in that for me, for you, there might not be. But for me, there is to focus on the thing that I'm focus on what I'm there to do. I'm there not to get a good time or distance or speed in my running. I'm there to hear from God. And so it takes real discipline to stop running and to write those things down. But the rules, the rewards are huge, Um, but it requires discipline. Um, So. That, that gives you some context in terms of running. And I'm going to give a little bit more context in a moment. 
Um, and I, I'm going to bounce onto the idea of the gentle breeze. And, and this all leads up to the day after um, the Christmas Grinch stole Christmas and plunged us into tier four. I'm, I'm saying that kind of tongue in cheek. I think, you know, the measures were, were, were necessary. And I think it's really important, actually, that we, we don't get into criticising our leaders. Sometimes it's really easy to do. But I think the person that, that is worse for it is for us. And I think we've got to maintain a supportive stance for our leaders. And the best way to be supportive of for them is to keep on praying for them. So let's try and avoid criticism and let's try and maintain holding them up in prayer. Anyway, the Christmas Grinch had stolen Christmas and I was going for a run. Um, and I, I had a sense that I wanted to run on a slightly different route to usual, a slightly longer route to usual, um, which was going to mean that I needed more time. But I just wanted to run somewhere different. I wanted to run through the forest. Unfortunately, I was delayed leaving the house. And, and actually, I'd taken measures to be able to make this run. I often on Sunday morning, when I run, go for a walk with a friend of mine. I had cancelled that walk because I wanted to increase the run. And I felt there was perhaps some thinking that God had for me in increasing that run. And I'm learning to be sensitive to those gentle breezes. This idea of the gentle breeze comes from um, 1 Kings 19. 10 to 13 so let me read this to you 1, 1 kings 19 10 says in the word of the lord so elijah was hiding from a cave he thought he was the only prophet left in all of israel and uh he was hiding in the cave fearing for his life and the word of the lord came to him what are you doing here elijah he replied i've been very zealous for the lord god almighty the israelite the israelites have broken down your altars i am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me. God said, go and stand on a mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. So all those, you know, strong winds, earthquakes, fires, and the Lord wasn't there. The Lord was in the gentle whisper. And there was a sensitivity of Elijah that when he caught hold of that whisper, he went and listened. He, he pricked his ears up. And so I find oftentimes when God speaks to me, it's not through the earthquake. It's not necessarily through the um, the global health pandemic. It's not necessarily through the national economic exiting of Brexit. Um, it's sometimes through the small things that maybe are how I respond to those big occasions. It's the, it's the gentle breeze. And so I've been seeking to train myself to respond to that gentle breeze to make sure I give God the time, the space. So a gentle breeze says, Nathan, take a different run this morning. Now, I don't want to be super spiritual with these things. I don't, <laughs> I don't go about preaching about them, um, usually. <laughs> but um, I just want to be alert. And, you know, it's no big deal if if the run was just a run of a different route, then I'll enjoy that too. I'll enjoy my work in a slightly different way. The risk, sometimes step out in these instances and see what God's got to do. Um, however, on this occasion, I, I heard the gentle nudge of God, but I ran out of time to do my usual run. And then my son said to me, oh, dad, can I go for a run with you? And so I thought, okay, well, I'll, I've, I've not got time to do the long run. I'll do a shorter run than usual. Then I'll come back and I'll, I'll run with Caleb. And so I had a sense that perhaps God wanted something different for me on this particular run. Um, so as I left home and started to set up my podcast on my phone to listen to um, whoever I was going to listen to in that run, time was ticking. I'd said to Caleb, I would be back at 9.45, be ready by the door. So I had a particular schedule and, you know, I like routine and I like, to have you know a target so i knew what distance i needed to do and how long that would take um and i couldn't get the podcast running and i thought god you know perhaps god's got something else for me than listening to the podcast um 
But actually, you know, then the podcast started to play. So I was like, okay, it's all right. I'll just crack on as per usual, as per my routine. And um, 10 minutes into the run, my podcast was going in my ears and I felt that I shouldn't be listening to the podcast. I felt that God wanted to speak to me or I felt that God wanted had something different for me. So I stopped the podcast, scratched my head and thought, well, well now what? You know, I've got a certain routine and now I'm off the routine. What is it I'm going to do? So I'm still running along. Um, and I just thought, ah, oh, to what well, I prefer a couple of my friends that, that God's been putting on my heart. So as I started to pray for these friends, suddenly God spoke to me. The second chance was don't listen to the podcast. The third time was in the middle of my podcast to interrupt it. So I interrupted it. I started praying for my friends, started praying in tongues. And God said to me, I will change the order of things. And that's essentially the message that I, I wanted to bring to you, that God is saying, I will change the order of things. And the context of that, as I said, was eight hours after um, the, the Christmas Grinch had stolen Christmas and plunged us into tier four. Um, two hours before, as a church, we're having to change the way that we did the Sunday morning meeting again. Instead of broadcasting from Lifeline House, we're going to be back to Mark Baden's front room or wherever it is that he's standing. Who knows? He might be in the bathroom, um, wherever it is. Um, and I could see that through the corona crisis, God is changing the order of things. And I felt there was something right in that, that God was saying, I want to change the order of things. Now, I'm not saying that corona is sent by God, but I think we'll all agree that God uses whatever situation and circumstances we find ourselves in to bring his glory. And there's something I believe God's saying about his desire to change the order of things, change the way that we do things. And so as I asked God, what is this about? He spoke to me about two different areas, ruts and routines. And so I felt God was saying that he wants to bring relief to us from our routines, just like he had evidence with me in that morning, changing my running routine to to bring to bring a relief to it and to be able to break into it. Um, now, I said, I think routines are good. Um, I think habits can be very healthy. And actually, I think it's a way that God's designed our brains that we form neural pathways takes less mental energy to do the things that we always do so when you learn to drive and it, it takes all your concentration and when i would come out of a driving lesson my back would be soaking wet from sweat because i've been focusing all my attention on driving but once you've learned to drive um how you actually drive is second nature and you can do all, all manner of things you can talk to people in the car you can listen to music a podcast you can think about something other than who's going to crash into you um, or how you avoid some crazy pedestrians. You can do all manner of things at, at the same time. That's because driving becomes a habit. These things become a habit and they get into our, our routine and they become really easy for us to do. It saves energy. So I don't think routines are wrong, but I think we always want to be dependent upon God rather than the routine. And I think that's what God was saying to me on this Sunday morning was about not becoming dependent on routines, not becoming dependent that on Sunday morning, we all meet together at Mayfield High School, or on a Sunday morning, we broadcast from Castle Point, or on a Tuesday night, we get together with six friends and sit in our garden. Um, and we've adapted each time Corona has stepped up to the next tier, and we found another way to express church, but we can easily fall into routines with how we do things and God's saying that he doesn't want us to fall into routines that he's a jealous God and he wants us to be dependent upon him not dependent on our routines and so I feel that that's the key point and I think if we are people that like routines if you're like me I would encourage you to offer those routines to God to hold them open-handed and say to God is this something I should give to you I'm not necessarily saying you should spend 20 minutes a day doing it, but just be open to those particular routines and open for God to invade, because I think that's where he can bring something quite special to us. The other expression that I felt was that God was saying he would change the order of things. He's a jealous God. He wants us to worship him, not our routines. And he wants to bring us relief from our routines. I also felt him saying he wants to bring us release from our ruts. Now, ruts and routines are somewhat similar. Um, but we would tend to use routine as a positive word and ruts as a negative. 
hence the term I'm stuck in a rut. And um, sometimes when I cycle, um, I can get stuck in a rut. In fact, I remember a particular time cycling with Michael and uh, we were mountain biking and I had new pedals for my trainers. And sorry, new pedals and trainers, they're called SPDs. You clip your shoe into your pedal and then you're fixed. It means your foot doesn't slip. And I was riding along and all, the, all of a sudden, we go really slow. All of a sudden I was on my side and I thought, what, what went wrong? Why did this happen? Well, I got stuck in a rut and because I wasn't used to the pedals, when my bike got unbalanced and I started to tip, I couldn't take my foot off the pedal because it was stuck to the pedal. So I ended up on my shoulder. Um, I was stuck in a rut. And there's some of the ruts that we might be stuck in, might be jobs that, that we don't like, that we can't find a way out of, might be a dysfunctional relationship, might be a cyclical behavior that, that we wouldn't attribute to being positive, not a routine, but something that we feel trapped in, might be an ongoing mental or physical health problem. And I felt God was saying that he wants to change the order of things and he wants to bring us a release from those ruts that we might be in. And God is the God of changing the order of things, whether it's calming stools, turning water into wine, or stopping the sun so people can commence and be one, our God is a God that will change the order of things. And I felt he was refreshed, his promise that he will make us the head and not the tail. And oftentimes when we're stuck in a rut, we feel pretty low and we feel pretty deep. But God's saying that he wants to change the order of things and he wants to bring us out of those situations, out of those ruts. He wants to give us a new hope. He wants to allow us to see things from a different perspective. And he wants to perhaps change the way that we pray once again so in conclusion god's a god who likes to shake things up he wants us to be dependent upon him dependent upon him in the good dependent upon him in the bad he sent a king born in a manger to free his people from the traps of religion every step of the way a king didn't come in chariots but came as a baby um wasn't born in the capital city but a by by town um he sowed prostitutes into the line the heritage of jesus king david's grandmother great grandmother was a was a prostitute um jesus hung out with prostitutes and tax collectors the people that the jewish people didn't like at every step of the way the kingdom of god has come to change the order of things and we see that polarized through jesus's behavior that he didn't fall into the usual rut of the religious leaders but he was determined to change the order of things to shake things up to show that there's a different way of doing things and to bring people to become dependent on jesus not dependent on religion and so sometimes our routines can feel like our a, a religion just like it did for the religious leaders this time but god's saying he wants to shake he wants to shake things up and he will use Brexit and Corona and school closures and whatever else it is. He wants us to focus solely on him and, and to be dependent on what he's got for us. And, and he wants to encourage us to live to this order, to his order, as he changes things around. Thank you for listening to this podcast by Lifeline Church. We hope this message has been an encouragement to you. We are a relational church with a passion to demonstrate God's love to one another and our surrounding community in real and practical ways. We believe that God has called us to have an impact on our families, our communities and our nation. We'd love to connect further with you, so please do visit our website at lifelinechurch.co.uk, on Facebook, lifeline.church.uk or Twitter at Lifeline UK. Thank you.